question. But basically teaching right division, get a group of people to, that come in and, uh, and have a systematic presentation to go through the, the basics of right division. Uh, in 2013, we did, that was the first year that we had done it. And uh, the first year, we just bought 50 copies of Richard's book, Through the Bible in Seven Hours, and we gave those out to people as they, as they came. And that first year, we had, it was either 17 or 18 cold contacts that came, um, and they didn't all make it all the way through the whole program, but it was just, it was just amazing. We didn't know what we were going to get. But to have 17 people in a small community of about five to 8,000 people, um, it, was, it was a tremendous thing, and it was local. So people came. Uh, Rick wanted me to be sure to mention how we advertised it. Um, we presented it basically in three ways. We uh, presented it on the radio ministry. We have a radio broadcast every week, and we advertised it. I promoted it in our, in our broadcast um, over to the regular radio listening audience. We also purchased spot ads, 60-second uh, uh, spot ads that were pre-recorded by the radio station. We bought and paid for those. We ran those two weeks in advance of the of the um, event. And so we promoted it via radio. The most effective one that we did, and this is for small towns and small area communities, was through the newspapers. We did it in, in several local papers, the, the, the Louisville Herald, um, and then the East Canton newspaper, um, and other just small town newspapers in the area purchased block ads. And most of the newspapers will let you run a what they call a press release uh, and they will run that free. It's a public service that the newspaper does just to promote uh, events in the area. So we, we, had a, we had a press release. I have about 15 copies of, of a sheet of paper here that has some, um, some examples of some block ads. It has the actual text of the ad that we ran in the newspaper, which describes the event and how we laid it out and how we promoted it. I have those here, so if um, somebody wants these, we have them. Um, if we run out, we'll just make a few more copies here. But um, we, the, the, by far, the most effective tool in reaching new contacts in our, in our experience was through the newspaper. And so we, we promoted it through the local newspapers. And then we have in our area what's called the Mr. Thrifty. I don't know, they, they might have it in different areas, call it different things. In the Wisconsin area, they call it the Advertiser. It was a... It was a, a paper that comes out with all the, you know, the rental properties and the, the want ads and uh, the, the garage sales and, and different things. That's sent out publicly in, uh, and it blankets the community. Everybody reads those things because they're looking for a bargain they're, they're, or they're, they're looking for, um, you know, a garden tractor or a used car or whatever. That was um, uh, an effective tool. The newspapers did the most. And then we, then we purchased um, uh, postcards through Vistaprint. And this is just a little article, and we, we had our own uh, write-up on it, Through the Bible in Seven Hours, a free, non-denominational, seven-week Bible course. Travel with us toward a strategic understanding of God's Word, gain, gain the clarity and insight that you've longed for, the dates and so on there, the church address, website. And then I had an outline on the back, and we use these as personal outreaches with our people um, in, my, in my business contacts. Um, my, my window cleaning business, I have relationships built up with no, numerous people throughout, you know, like seven different communities in the area, 200 window customers that I've been servicing. Several of the more prominent businesses, they were more than happy to let me leave a stack of these right on the counter, right next to the cash register, so people could pick up, pick up those. On the back, there's an outline of each week and the material that we went through. So... The postcards, the newspaper, and the radio is how we promoted that. We tried to promote it about three weeks in advance uh, in, the, in the newspapers because you want, to, you want to expose people to the idea. You don't want to be too, out, too far out in front because, you know, people aren't going to, they don't have their, their schedule planned out, you know, four weeks in advance. But if they hear something, there's some interest in it, two to three weeks is a, is a good block of time to do that. So, and, and you emphasize the issue of it's free. Um, a free Bible study course, no cost for registration. Um, and then we also promoted uh, that it was a non-denominational independent Bible study. And we phrased different things, you know, using the Bible's own approach to its, uh, to its own layout. 
and design and, you know, however you want to, you know, however you want to structure that. In the radio promotions, I would talk to the audience about the subject, gain an understanding about Bible prophecy, the general setting of the book of Revelation. Everybody has interest in the end times, and you throw out those, those terms that people hear that, you know, only the guys on television or maybe only their pastor knows anything about, but you, you emphasize the point that you really can gain an understanding of God's Word for yourself so that you can read and understand and enjoy the Bible for yourself. So you promote it that way. Um, we asked people to pre-register. Um, that was basically just to let them know that, we were, that they were coming so that we could have the appropriate number of study guides on hand because we promoted uh, the study comes with a free study guide with notes and outlines and charts that you can have and you can follow along as the material is being taught. So getting people to pre-register, they call or they, they register online through the website or email, that gives you an idea of who's coming. And when we had names and people that were coming, then we could make name tags. So people would come in and they'd see their own little pile of, you know, their material right then and there. So it made them, made them feel like they were, uh, you know, they were, they were part of something that was significant and important. The thing about, um, the thing about notebooks, the first year we gave out the, the paperback copy, uh, we, we bought 50 of them, of, of seven hours through the Bible, and I basically just taught through that material. The second year, I began a process. Uh, I, I revamped that and restructured the uh, the individual weeks into our own material. And I went to Staples, and you can buy um, the the, the uh, economy uh, three ring binders for about two bucks a piece. And so we made these available. And I produced the notes and the outlines through my Word documents and, and would just go and get them copied in, in three-hole punch paper. And we would give people the lesson as they came. The first week, they got a notebook, and they had the first lesson there. Because, and again, we knew who was coming, so we made those available to them that way. And then each subsequent week, we gave them the next week's or, or, or that week's lessons. They plugged them in their, their notebooks, and they, they followed along as I taught through the material. So we did it that way the, the second and the third year. The fourth year, uh, we got in touch with Brother Jerry Halstein, and we had our own booklets actually printed up. We have, uh, Jerry printed up some sample booklets for us, and uh, this one was a little bit smaller because it took the same uh, eight and a half by 11 sheets and documents that I had on Word, but shrinked them down. It's a nice size and to, to use and to handle, but the print is very, very small because it's... Uh, it's just basically reduced down. So, but Jerry has several of these. Then he pr also printed a larger size, which is the full eight and a half by eleven, and he printed these for us at a, at a tremendously economical cost. Jerry has fifty of these with him. So, if you'd like a sample of the material, you can talk to Jerry. Jerry, put your hand up. Um, he will he will make these available at a at a bargain basement price of three dollars a piece. Uh, if you'd like a sample of the material that we taught. But um, the, the basic idea was that people could follow th along as I, as I taught the material. So um, I, have, I have these handouts. I have several of these postcards that we used. And it was a tremendous outreach for us. As I said, the first year, I think we had between 17 and 18 cold contacts that, um, that were there for the first night. Probably by the end of the, the session, we had about... 12, 11 or 12 of those people that had, had made it all the way through. We had a couple folks, of course, saw the first night, and uh, they bailed on us. This wasn't what they were, what they were uh, envisioning. But uh, it was a very positive thing that way. Um, the second year was not quite as, as fruitful. The third year as well. Um, the, the third and fourth years were not quite as, as productive as far as cold contacts were concerned as far as numbers go. We still had newer folks. Um, and we have several of our folks here from that, that are the fruit of that ministry that became part of the ministry and the assembly. Um, they have, have invited other people to the, to the ministry as they've gotten excited and learned the material. And um, so it was, it was just a great benefit for us. Um, we had cold contacts, some of which are here this morning. Um, we had existing contacts through my work and, of course, the, the, the people in the church. It gets people active. 
It gets a buzz about, hey, we're having this big event. They've had people that they've talked about. They've had relatives that they've talked about. They can give them the postcard uh, and invite them to come and, and share a word of testimony about how they've learned that God's Word is, fits together and it clarifies things and so on. So we had existing contacts that I would, had been working, window customers, friends, acquaintances, neighbors, and so on, that came. Um, we had, uh, as a result of our move and our relocation to Louisville, we, we had new people that had visited the assembly just because it's a new church in the area. And we had some other contacts that had visited the church because at our, you know, as we began hosting services there. So we had newer people. So even though it wasn't a cold contact, they were exposed to time past, but now in the ages to come, the time chart and right division. And it was tremendously fruitful just as a confirmation and edification ministry to people that were, that were visiting and, and coming to the church. Um, we had, it was tremendously beneficial for our folks who had been taught this material years, years ago. Um, of course, I teach it piecemeal all the way as we go through, but um, it was tremendously benefit for our folks. We had one man who brought his son that uh, wanted to, to get, uh, have, have exposed to that, uh, that material as well. So it, it's been a tremendous outreach and a, a tremendous blessing to our assembly. We've done it for four years now. Um, last year when we were here, maybe it was the year before, that Brother Des Stridham, um, he adapted the program differently. He did it in five weeks uh, and, and restructured differently. He used the PowerPoint presentation as, as well. I think Rick Jr. has done some of these things as well. So you can take these, these materials and these things and uh, take the concept and uh, adapt it and use it whatever way would, uh, you know, would be beneficial for you. What we've, we've got the, the, um, the PowerPoint set up. One of the things that we did in, in our move and our relocation, I told a story I think last year or maybe the year before when I shared some things, is uh, I had envisioned moving into our new church building and putting a nice big chalkboard up. Um, but the folks couple of guys in particular said that we don't want to put up with your the writing that we can't read and the words that are misspelled as you try to teach the things. So we're going to move the time chart into the 21st century. So they put up the projector in the first year, the first the first 3 or 4 weeks, other people typed up the chart the the slides for me with the verses and so on. As I began to to tweak it and edit it, I began to learn some of the nuances of PowerPoint and eventually I learned and developed my own chart. Um, using the, 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 the things in PowerPoint. So I have a demonstration of the first week that we ran this, um, this past session, the 2016. I've edited out some things. Uh, one of the ways that I did that is I put the verses, I had the verses either on the screen, because you have new folks that, that can't, fight, can't find the material or find the books in their Bible. You're, you're going through material quite rapidly. So to expedite things, and so folks would be familiar and be able to see the verses, I would either have them on the screen or have the verses and be able to refer to them in the booklet and, and the handouts. Normally when I teach, I don't do that. I'll have a verse, I'll have the reference, maybe a, a portion or a phrase, but my desire and my goal is for people to follow along in their Bible and see the verses. Not put the verses up so, so people are disengaged that way, but, but in this process, for that particular setting, I put the verses either on the screen or in the, in the handouts. And these books wound it up, wound up being, and I wrote it in such a way that it's, that it's now a, a piece of literature that we have in our track rack. And you can give people a booklet that actually presents right division, you know, put together by your church. There are several multicolored charts in the books um, that I use for different sections like the 70 weeks or the book of Acts or the four gospels. I have a full chart that I use uh, that, that lays out the whole time past, but now in the ages to come. So um, I, w I was just going to give you just a, a brief demonstration and go through the layout. This was the first week that we, that we used this past year. You have a slide on the, on the screen as people come in. They, they say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to cover. Um, the, um, the, first se the first week, my goal is to do two things, is to lay out the gospel present the gospel clearly so that people hear um, the message of salvation and then give an overview of the Bible. Um, you know, the, 
time past but now in the ages to come, give them a sense of here's where we're going, here's how the Bible can fit together. And the thing that I found that as I began to learn how to use the PowerPoint materials that I could literally construct the chart piece by piece. When you put the whole thing up all at once, bang, somebody that's new to it, not familiar to it, can't process the information. But it's just like when we first saw it taught on the chalkboard. The chalkboard can be a mess at the end, and there's more white than green or white than black, but you followed it and you saw that you saw the thing open up and, and put together, and you just say, wow, and you see it all at one time. So that's why I began to develop my own presentation of that. The first issue of the gospel, this past year I used Ephesians chapter 2, that the Bible is a book of redemption, it's, and, and it's redemption not just of man, because we need to have a personal relationship and, and come to an understanding of sins forgiven and the, and the gift of eternal life and knowing when we're going to spend eternity. But in that process, the Bible is not just a book of, of, of man's redemption and how man can have a relationship with God, but it's God's redemption of his fallen creation. That it's the redemption of the creation in two realms, in heaven and in earth. But I, I go through the first few verses of the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and deal with man's problem and that, that sin and separated from God and we're, we're dead in trespasses and sins. We walked according to the course of this world and so on. And I'm going to expedite the rest of these because I'm pretty sure most of you folks here already understand those things. But, but I would just go step by step through these issues. God's provision in Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, man's responsibility is to respond in faith and you present the gospel. And the clear issue of, uh, of a personal decision to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's a free gift and it's not of works. It's nothing that we do. And then I used Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that now we have man's opportunity is to walk in faith and participate in God's plan and what he's doing. And there's some good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. God's plan includes the redemption of his creation and that God's word is written so that, so that we can have the unfolding and the, 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 the declaration of God's plan and what, what he's doing in both heaven and the earth, which sets the stage. And see, you're teaching them right out of the Bible. You're teaching them right out of the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. You've given them the gospel in the first half of the chapter. And then, of course, verse 11, 12, 13, and 14 deals with time past, but now. And then you've already, you've already talked about eternal life and the issue of the ages to come. So this is the introduction to why we study the Bible and how God's Word um, reveals His plan. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Then I give a very brief presentation of the Bible itself, which Bible that we use. All Bibles are not created equal. Um, in, our, in our folder, uh, in the jacket, um, I, I had literature. I had the, the, the handheld chart. We had a, a track that we use called the, the New Eye Opener, which is a comparison of the, the books of the New Testament. That, um, and there's about, tw there's about 200 verses from the New Testament that's showing the differences between basically the textual issue and the King James Bible. So I would introduce with just a couple of examples in the notebooks and the, and the handouts, I'd have more, but that all Bibles were not created equal. Compare the King James and the NIV. There's Colossians 1.14, and the King James has it, and the text of the NIV does not. And another example was Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, which is a really interesting one. That's the omission in, the, uh, in, in all the new Bibles. That's a textual issue where the Lord in, in Luke's account says, man shall not live by blood alone, but by every word of God. And those four words are omitted in the texts of the new Bibles. And you can demonstrate the textual issue. And then I have a, a, a slide and some information. Yes. Oh, the eye opener was just the, the, time, the, the time chart. Um, I had a gospel track. I had a forgiveness track, which, uh, you know, if you're familiar with this track, it also pre presents the issue of, of dispensational forgiveness, confession versus faith and, and forgiven once and for all. And then we had a church brochure as well. Um, that's similar to what uh, Ben was talking about with the inform an informa information about just a general summary of your ministry, uh, the statement of, of faith and the things that you believe and uh, has the gospel presented in it. So there's, there's literature that we gave out uh, along with the, uh, with, with the process. Um, 
this is just basically a brief summary of where the Bibles came from. Uh, this is right out of manuscript evidence that um, it's a New English Bible timeline, that there is a text that represents 95% of the manuscripts that then gave birth through the Protestant Reformation to the, the English Bible of Luther and Tyndale, and of course the predecessors to the King James. But then there's also another line of manuscripts that represent the modern Bibles, the 5% of manuscripts that gave birth to the, the Roman Catholic Bible, and then the the RV and the, the ASV and the NIV and so on. And then people have questioned about the New King James, and the New King James is a spinoff of that, that original line. So give them just some basic things about, you know, not detailed manuscript evidence, but most people don't realize that there is a difference, let alone why the difference is and where that difference comes from. And if you notice, I put in the, in the, in the, in the slides the page number of the booklet so they can follow along as you're, as you're going through it. Then um, there's 2 Timothy 3.16 again about we're, we're going to study all of the Bible. But then in the same book, here's how we're supposed to study the Bible. Um, originally, when we did these the first three years, we had two sessions. We would have a 30-minute session, and then we would have like a 15-minute break where we would have coffee and donuts and refreshments. It would give us a chance to socialize a little bit and meet the folks and find out about their background and then come back together for another 30 minutes. So this material that I'm covered really initially was presented in, in two 30-minute sessions. This past year, we, we tried a, a little different approach. We basically just had one study, and I, I taught for about 45 minutes and, and presented all these things without the, without the break in between. There was difference of opinion about how that went. But here's the issue of, of rightly dividing the word of truth, and then... This is the time chart that I have developed and learning how to actually put the chart together just as we've seen it drawn for 30 years, but use the electronic imagery. You have time past with the circumcision and the uncircumcision. There's the division in humanity. You have the Gentiles and, and using the different colors. The Gentiles were aliens and strangers. The, the nation of Israel... And, and their plan and their program, the Old Testament, the covenants and the law, the books of the Bible. And you're just watching that unfold and, and put together. The goal in time past was a kingdom preceded by a time of wrath and judgment. There's the book of Revelation that everybody likes to talk about, but it fits out in the future. We will talk about that at the, appointed, at the appropriate time. And we studied the Bible section by section. The first week was, a, was the gospel and an overview Here's how the chart, here's how the Bible lays itself out. Then we went Old Testament one week, studying the covenants and the promises, being the foundation of Israel, the, 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 the foundation of the division in time past. Israel had the covenants and promises. The Gentiles were aliens and strangers. Then we, we covered the four Gospels and the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ to Israel. He came fulfilling the promises, and now the kingdom that was prophesied in the Old Testament is now at hand because the Messiah is in their midst. One of the things that I also learned and caught on was as you, as you talk about the nation of Israel, in this upper line, the blue line that represents Israel, you can, you can present the issue of the little flock and that the little flock is within the nation of Israel, a, a nation within the nation. And so you could illustrate that point as you went, as you, as you talked about Jesus came... Uh, and he came and he wasn't sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the group that he is forming is not Jew and Gentile and everybody that's out there, but it was a group of his people. He came to save his people from their sins. So that was just something that was, that was helpful as we have taught that in our assembly too to illustrate the, the issue of the little flock. Then of course you have the, the four gospels end with the crucifixion. Um, Jesus Christ goes away. Sends the Holy Spirit down on the little flock. Here it comes. It should be there. It should be there. Okay. Some of these were, were, were automatic. Okay, you got, yeah, you got the book of Acts first. And then the Holy Spirit comes on the little flock. And the stage was set. And Israel has their second opportunity, their second chance. And this is the subject of prophecy. Well, in, uh, and, and the goal of prophecy was the second coming of Jesus Christ back to the earth to establish his kingdom. And the law was going to be replaced by the new covenant and all those things were out there in the future. But that's where we were when we came through the four Gospels and the book of Acts. 
as it opens, but the book of Acts is a transition. The issue is today is not a spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men, that the Lord wasn't really talking about a literal kingdom, but the issue was a secret. Um, I guess I hit more than one button at the same time, but the age of grace, interrupting the prophetic program, the body of Christ in heaven, and so you have time past and but now and, and ages to come. And then the, um, the Hebrew epistles. So this was the six, the, the, the seven weeks. The overview first with the gospel, then the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, then the four gospels. Then we did just a week on the book of Acts where you can, you can so the opening of the book of Acts is Israel and the prophetic program. Saul is saved, made Paul the apostle in the middle chapter of the book of Acts. And then we had one week where we just focused on Paul's epistles and showed the design and the outline of Paul's epistles. The, uh, the age of grace ends with the rapture. And then we finish the program with the, the, uh, the Hebrew epistles and uh, whatever happened to the little flock and you know, putting, that, putting that all together. And, and so the basic issue in rightly dividing the word of truth is the difference between prophecy and the mystery. Prophecy spoken since the world began, the mystery kept secret since the world began, revealed to the Apostle Paul. And uh, this is the way that I use the chart now, and, and our folks are real glad that we don't have a blackboard because I, I can use this in a lot of other different ways. Um, we put the, the, the songs and the hymns. I have about 110 or so hymns that I have basically typed up or gotten from a different program. So we sing off of this. Um, it gives the ministry more of a, dare I say, contemporary flavor, uh, more of a modern approach. We still have people that use the hymn books because they like to, you know, they like to see the notes going up and down and so on. But we use the, the, the electronic imagery in a lot of different ways um, in, the, in the assembly and in the ministry. And so uh, then we finish up. I, I put a slide up. See you next week. And the next week is the, the Old Testament. We'll look at the covenants and promises. And away we go. And it's just been a wonderful um, tool for us to use. Our folks have benefited from it. Our, our local church and our saints who have been uh, had these things taught for them for years, um, seeing new folks come in and get excited about it and understand it. And uh, uh, it's just been a, been a great thing. This is, this is, this is a, a picture uh, a couple of years ago, actually. Every year we update, and uh, I begin our Sunday morning services with a slide, Welcome to Berean Bible Church, and we have a picture of the congregation and so on. But uh, it's uh, just been a, a real positive and a real, real blessed thing for us. And uh, if you have any other questions about that, I would talk to Des also. Um, they have done something similar. Um, I, have, I have any of these materials up here that you're free to look at. Jerry has some that you, um, if you'd like to, you can purchase and um, take those with you. I have my laptop here. If any of you have a flash drive, I have several um, sections with different slides from all different topics to the, um, uh, the ambassadorship class, the spirit, soul, and body, and the three natures of man, I have Acts charts, I have prophecy charts, uh, four gospel charts, all different things. You're welcome to any of that if you want a flash drive and you want to copy any of that off of my computer um, to, um, to use. I think Brother Ken Scarf has taken some of these materials and he's used them. And uh, it's just been a, been a great help. But um, through the Bible, we borrowed the, uh, we borrowed the title and the concept. It's something that, uh, that they did here at Shorewood. We have talked about maybe doing it instead of weekly we did it, one of, one of the benefits of this is we did it on Thursday nights. And we did it Thursday nights instead of Wednesdays because if people attended midweek services in their own church, it didn't present a conflict. But the first year we did it, after eight weeks, the eighth week was a Q&A. We, we brought in pizza. And uh, we had, we had uh, pizza at 6.30. And then we just had, from 7 o'clock afterward, we had a Q&A time where people could ask questions and our people ask questions, the new, po the new folks did. And since we had people accustomed to coming to church on Thursday nights, I started teaching the book of Acts and our, we, we resurrected the midweek service in our assembly. We had, had folks that hadn't been accustomed to that. It was hard to, to generate the interest. We had a bunch of new folks that were excited about this and wanted to meet. So um, we, we've, we had uh, a midweek service um, and midweek meetings, that's just been a tremendous thing for us to have as well. So 
that's what we've done. It's been a, a great blessing. We got some folks here that um, um, have benefited from it, and uh, it's just exciting to see God's work. Work, and uh, that was one of the one of the ways that we had approached that. Okay, any questions? Quick question. So, you sound like you do this outreach annually, or is it one? We have done this every year. Yes, we've done this four years in a row. Um, initially it was, it was like four, no, it was more like five to six hundred dollars by the time you bought the advertising in the, in the newspaper, by the time you bought the advertising spots on the radio, and then produced some type of booklet. When we did, when we did these booklets, these booklets were about seven bucks a piece. By the time you bought the, uh, by the time you bought the, the, the binder itself and then did the copying, one of my window customers was a, was a print shop. And so they, they copied uh, in great quantities for me, um, gave me a really good price on them. But, but these, we were giving these away at about six bucks a piece. And um, so in answer to your question, the budget was four to five hundred dollars total to, uh, to accomplish that. Okay, yes. Yes, yes. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 9. I'm not going to preach, but this is a verse. We have, uh, we've done the seven hours, actually, that we did the seven Mondays. It was Thursday nights. From that, I have uh, fruit from that in our ministry. Several years ago was a gentleman who is now my teen group teacher, graduate of GSB, a pain on our budget committee, and a wonderful addition to our board. And a pain because he's a stickler with the money. But uh, anyway, so we have uh, the seven, we've done this. By the way, it's good to be here. I wasn't here last year and just from work and just not able to get away. Um, but it is good to be back. And uh, about a year and a half ago, it, it's kind of hard to start when you're going to talk about marriage and money. H- how did we get to that? Um, about a year, year and a half ago, I sat in my school bus and uh, had got done with my morning route and was just sitting there filling paperwork out, doing my thing. I'm a special ed bus driver, so I drive special ed, so I got paperwork to fill and stuff every, every shift. And I just got to thinking, and you know how sometimes you go, how did I get here? You don't remember driving there? I was that way the whole morning. And all my kids were safe. They all got to school on time and everything. But what was in the back of my mind is some of this about ministry and how we begin as we learn the doctrine, as we teach, and as we begin to lay things in. And I'm going to talk more about that this tomorrow. Is we do a good job of giving them the, the doctrine, and we do a lousy job of making it very practical. And it's a very practical doctrine, isn't it? as teachers, okay? So 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. And to them, verse 21, to them that are without the law, as without the law. Verse 22, to the weak became... I begin to think about that, not so much in all the doctrinal stuff, but just in a practical manner. I need to be who my folks that are coming need to be. So... We begin to do things at church and trying to kind of f- find where things are at. So we had done the seven Mondays. We do a swap meet with something similar. We don't have the fancy boards except my handyman on my board, he's texting me, get the pictures of the boards. Okay? So, you know, wonderful thing about te- technology. So we, we did a parking lot sale in our church parking lot. Everything was free. Had the folks bring stuff free. We passed out tracks. We passed a thousand tracks out in two weekends. We saw two gentlemen get saved. One for sure. One was kind of eh. But people in the neighborhood, one gentleman he asked me, he goes, I've never seen the inside of this building. The church has been there since 1950. The building has been. And I said, well, come on, let's go in. So we went in. I showed him around. Showed him. He's like, wow, this is nice. And then we moved to the platform. He goes, oh, I can't go up there. I said, sure you can. Come on. You know? And, and he's standing up there in just... You know, so we've done stuff like that, had good response. Um, In thinking about 1 Corinthians 9, and in looking around, one of our gentlemen on our board, uh, Brian Steiner, he's our 
uh, great school of the Bible, graduate and, and so on. He's my landscaper at the church, and he says to me, he's also, we have two treasures, and, and he says to me, we need to talk about finances. And I'm like, great, now what, you know? And he says, have, do you know a guy by the name of Dave Ramsey? How many have heard of Dave Ramsey? Okay. Like him or hate him, I don't care. So I listen to him. He's on our radio program. And, and Brian says, we're having a hard time financially to church, but also in the people, you know, because if the giving isn't there, then something's going on. What's happened? Because it was there, now it's slowing down and so forth. So what we did was we listened to Dave Ramsey. We ordered his Financial Peace University. We went through it. And you have to know who Dave is. You have to pay attention to this because Dave's an evangelical. He doesn't use a King James Bible, but he has a presentation about financial stuff that everyone in this room understands and knows about, but for some reason he can make you do it where I can't. Okay? So we went through it, um, and we had a successful event with some folks from church, and we got to talking about hosting the Financial Peace University. You can host it. Dave loves churches. He, if you listen to anything on his radio, now, again, doctrinally, he's way out, not even on the ball field, okay? But you can host the Financial Peace University. We do it. It's free to host. doesn't cost you anything. You just have to have the facility and the time. Brian monitors it, takes care of it, sits. What happens is, is you watch a DVD of Dave for about 40 minutes. Then after that, you have discussion time. I've got the booklet right here. The discussion time goes through a little workbook. It's all Ramsey, and I'm not promoting him because you can find this in other people, okay? This is what we did. Fits us out there by us. In the discussion time, that's when Brian sits with people. We don't know these people. These are not folks from our assembly. And guess what he talks to them about? Do you, do you, do you, is it faith by works or is it faith alone? It's up on the chalkboard in the room that they use. Hey, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? All of a sudden, now we're having conversations, not so much about finances, but about other stuff. And it kind of works out, and you have to be very delicate because these people are there for the financial thing. So we've had great success in exposing people to our assembly. We have tracks in the fellowship room that they use. You know, we have everything you have, we've got, and more, and just pass stuff out and talk to people all day. Then, so we do, we do that, and again, you can pick guys. There are f- at least three or four other guys who do financial stuff that you can use, but none of them are Bible-driven, if you will. Let me say it like that. The lesson nine of Dave... Uh, on on the course is about the great uh, is about giving building wealth and give and i was floored by it honestly because he brought in the issue of grace giving cuz i'm thinking bring in the kingdom stuff and he didn't talk about that at all the great misunderstanding the paradox is more is the mistaken belief that the way to have more is to hold on tightly you understand that we're talking about money now A steward is a manager, not an owner. What are we? We're the stewards of the mysteries. And he begins to talk about giving. Giving is a reminder of ownership. Giving is praise and worship. Everybody wants to do praise and worship. Giving is praise and worship. I'm sitting there going, he's been listening to me. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Giving is is a spiritual warfare. I mean, you think about that. I'm sitting there going, I'm writing them down like, whoa. Whoa. Now listen, here, here's an, the, the tithe is a tenth of your increase. Now you think about what that is. Everybody, gross or the net, right? He didn't say neither. It's on the what? The increase. That's interesting, coming from a guy who's out there in left field. So anyway, so we do that. At the end of this lesson, because it walks you through his steps and stuff, his point in that is... If you, as the congregation, are debt-free, and you are giving like no other one, no, nobody else can give, I think that's how he says it, then the guy standing up here doesn't have to work a second job. 
because you are paying him to be here, to do his job. Follow that. Now, we, we sit here, yeah, 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 but none of you can do it because you're so rattled with debt and don't understand how to do things over here, see? So it's a very interesting program. We then took it and taught our young people, our college-age class. And the question that we had with parents was, well, they don't use a King James Bible. That's okay. Where else is a better place to, for your young people to understand how to deal with a bad Bible verse than in the comfort and the protection of your local assembly? Because when they're in the world, and my kids are in the world at college, they don't have the protection of going, hey, hang, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> they have to be in that world already knowing how to handle the Bible verses when they're wrong. Okay? So as leaders and as thinking about things, you've got to pay attention to that. Now, again, I'm not promoting, Dave. You, if you're going to sign up, you've got to pay the guy. You've got to do his thing. We're doing that as a tool. One in outreach and talking, getting people to come and see and do. But then internally to say, hey, here's some principles. By the way, all the biblical principles that he goes over about money are found in the book. I've taught them. You've probably heard other people teach about them. But for some reason, and it's in the next little thing I'm going to talk about, in marketing, he gets across a lot better than I do. Or maybe you have. It's interesting. When we did that, that was about two years ago. I was sitting in my bus thinking about things, and I went and I looked at the megachurches in our area because the megachurches have a wonderful thing about marketing to where people are at. And, you know, we have the, we have the most relative doctrine and message there is out there. These guys don't, but yet the, the statistic that I last time saw was one person in the front door of a megachurch, there's seven going out the back door. And, and when the economy shut down out by us, there were preachers being youth ministers and music ministers and the megachurch was being cut. Done. Go. They asked one guy, would you stay and lead the music? And he said, no, only if I get paid. And they said, well, we can't pay you. He said, then I'm out. And he took off, left. It's like, whoa, okay, well, there was his heart. <laughs> was in the paycheck. But my point is, as I begin to look at how these guys are impact, how are they dealing with people? Because we need to be able to deal with people. We have the right message from the right book with the right spirit, but how, where are we at? So I did a series on relationships. It's on our YouTube page and so forth. And what happened was, was I, I did it. It's, it's about the role of a husband and a wife and family and a father and your work and so forth. And what happens when they blow up and different things. And every, afterwards, everybody's like, we need more about that marriage stuff. So I went looking. I want to see what's out there. And when I went to the mega church's website, do you know the top two things that they are emphasizing right now? Money, finances, and marriage. Because of the onslaught socially and politically and so forth. So I was like, hmm. So I got to looking at what they were doing. And who are they using, you know? And they're using all, because the, they're all from the same niches, so they're using some guy has got a big old book out. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to use any of that. I'm not going to give them my money. Well, what about us? So I went looking at all of you guys. And I'm going, we don't have anything. And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. Dad did something. Marriage matters. But it wasn't the Marriage Matters tapes in there. It was a Marriage Matters seminar back in 07, I think, or 08, somewhere in there. So I went through my box of dad stuff, and I found it. And I was like, that's what we're going to do. Now, what I did then was I began to talk about it at church, just say, hey, we're going to have a marriage seminar. You have to sign up because we're going to make nice little handout booklets, which I don't have any with me because... This took my wife and I eight hours to put together. Took her seven, me one, just supervising. And we only made exactly how many people signed up because it was got expensive. I will encourage you to use Kinko's and somewhere else to do it in the future. But uh, the thing is, is we I went down through the seminar, and I'm like, 
I think so. I, I, yeah, I think Debbie does. If you talk to Debbie, she has copies. Yeah. So what I did was there's a DVD that goes with it. I listened to the DVD, and I went through the information and began to see, oh, maybe I should be doing that. <laughs> you know? Oh, hey, hey, honey, come here. There's one you need to see. <laughs> and uh, so this, what we used... I did not alter from, from what Dad and them did here. Now, the DVD is different because I'm not Dad, and I, I went at it in my manner and, and so forth, which is very similar to how Dad does it, but it's me, okay? And we had 35 peoples in the seminar. And I say peoples because it's not all couples. My daughters were there. My son was there. We had several uh, single folks there. They're wanting to know what's going on. And we went through it. And we went six hours on a Saturday. Three, we went nine to noon, lunch. We catered it in. We brought it in. We took care of it. They, nobody left. We went at one to three, one to four-ish, 3.30-ish. And coming out of it, the comments were, oh, that was wonderful. That was great. Ooh, we got work to do. But where is it? It's right where the people are. The financial stuff is right where they are. By the way, the financial thing we did with our college age group, our young adults, right now in that we have, not counting my kids, I think three other kids that are in college with no financial aid at all. As far as, I mean, loans. I shouldn't say aid, loans. You know, the big thing is student loan debt. They have no debt. They're working jobs. They've got their scholarships together. They're working right through it. You know what that produces on the other side? No debt. Liberty. Freedom. I have one young man right now, he, he's, he's applied to six different police departments. His dad's a policeman. And he, has, he drives a very nice car for a 19-year-old, paid cash for it. That's pretty good. I'm like, okay, good. Now come over here. I've got to talk to you about the offering box. <laughs> you know, and, and they do and so forth. The marriage matters. When I looked at the mega churches, I wasn't looking for doctrinal issues or anything like that. I was looking for ideas of where, are, where do they. They're big marketers. Where are they and how they're dealing with, their, with the people that come there. Okay? And... Finances and marriage were the two big issues. Now, their money issues is one's coming in while seven's leaving. They, they got a bigger deal, a bigger nut to mess with. And marriages, they, they understand that as well. So what I did, we took this. Ours was marriage seminar. Our, our, our uh, slogan was strong marriages make strong families that make a strong local, local church because of that foundational issue. Coming in the fall, we're doing an evangelistic seminar. Uh, I'm going to use some of Tom, uh, Dictionary of the Gospel, some of the ETC stuff, um, and, and do that. We're one-day events. I'm finding in, in Arizona, if you come out by us, they like to play more than they like to do anything else. You can play year-round in our state. Um, we have the number one boating registration in the country is in Arizona. Uh, the number one county is Maricopa County. It's where I live. So people like to play. That means i got to catch them one time at one event. Well, you follow that? We make it up. We do a big deal about it and so forth. So we're doing things. Do you guys know who the comic Stephen Wright is? The deadpan guy? He said, to steal ideas from one person is plagiarism. To steal from many is research. Okay, so I did the research, and I'm borrowing from everybody, okay? But when you do that, honestly, the issue is, is in, 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 in leadership and in ministry is you need to know your people. My people are struggling in, in, a, in a state that has very, I mean, I think we're number 50 out of the 50 in education. So it's very, it's a no, you don't, thread on, you don't tread on me, we're the wild, wild west, 
in my assembly, we, I mean, I tote, we all tote, we're just, boom, that's the mentality, you know. I'm talking about guns, okay. We, have a, we don't have any permit issues. You can carry open, you can carry concealed. They don't care, just don't shoot me, you know. Well, you know what they say, an armed society is a polite society, and it is. Just come on out and visit, okay. So, except for the old people. Yeah, you guys from back east and up north, oh, my goodness. Anyway, if you want to understand that, just ask me later. Um, I drive a school bus, and you would not believe the stuff I see behind a 40-footer, and then now I'm in a 25-footer, okay? It's, yeah, anyway. Um, we deal, you got to know your people. What I do out there, this issue here, again, I just use what Dad did. It, why reinvent the wheel? You know, I, I look at... Uh, the key to understanding the Bible, we used Ted's track. I was telling him we did the parking lot sale. We, we handed out a bulk of the stuff we handed out was that goofy little forgiveness track that was written years and years ago. And they're like, man, we need more of that. We have a gentleman in our assembly who speaks Spanish. He is an Oscar Woodall. And there's not a moment that guy isn't asking somebody, do you know where you're spending eternity? And he told me, he goes, the best Spanish track out there is that Am I Going to Heaven track. It's simple, and it's direct, and it's right to the point. And I'm like, well, okay. Wait till I show him that dictionary of the gospel in Spanish. He's going to be ordering boatloads of them because he loves the stuff. The thing is, is you've got to know your people. You've got to know where you're at. And we, ha- we do something very, s- just, this is very simple. Um, I would, if you do the seminar on the marriage, do it at one time. I have some folks that weren't able to make it. They're trying to do it um, an hour at a time, and it's not effective because the seminar, well, it is effective, but it's, it's hard to get because the seminar is designed to start you with the bad and pull you through to the good. Start out identifying the issue of the the how God set up marriage in Genesis. Then the issue of what love is... You don't fall in love, you learn to love. Okay, well, what is that? (laughs) Holy cow, now you open the can of worms because you thought you just fell in love. Well, if you fall in love, you can fall out of love, can't you? So you pull through that. Then you start dealing with the problems, where they come from. By the way, where do they come from? little word, it's called sin. You deal with some of that, then you bring in the, the possibilities, the benefits of it, and how to deal with it. And the, the, how you deal with it, honestly, is the grace principle, put off, put on. Yeah, it's simple, but it takes a handout and six hours to get people to go, oh, yeah, wow, you know. <laughs> because what do they have? At home, they got 10,000 things coming at them, and, they, you know, you just have to know your people. Oh, the missions. That's what it was. Um, we have a young lady in our assembly. She graduated from Arizona. This is coming. We're, we're working on this right now. And she's going to the mission field, and we're sending her. Um, uh, more administratively than anything else at this point. And we are investigating how to create a mission board, if you will. Um, we are not looking to... Frank wants to go to... Timbuktu, this is Frank right here. He doesn't want to go to Timbuktu. He lives in Florida. That's pretty good, close to Timbuktu. But uh, we're looking at, if you have somebody in your assembly that is thinking about the mission field, they need help getting there administratively and financially. If you look at any grace, quote-unquote, grace organization in the mission field, they take anywhere from 20 to 30% of the giving that you give towards someone going overseas, okay? And then when you look at their doctrinal statement, you can't agree with almost all of it, (laughs) you know? So then you're giving your money to a group that you can't agree with, and they're taking a third of it, and you're really dealing with the guy behind it. What we're trying to do is eliminate all that to where you can send money, go through us, it goes, 100% of it goes to... Um, whoever it is, and so forth. We're doing that with Rebecca right now. We're learning. Um, She's going to Thailand. She's going to work with the school over there and so forth. And we're trying to develop that out and try to get the 
the ABCs in the right order and stuff. So if you are interested in helping with that, I just need the the direction, you know, here's step one, here's step two. I've been talking to Des a little bit about it. And it's not that we're going to be looking to send people. It's people who already have that, who want to go, who would like, you know, if, if, can I name names? Is that okay? If you, if, if you go to Things to Come Mission or Grace International Mission, Grace Missions International Agency, they're in Grand Rapids or Things to Come, you can't, and, and somebody says, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with these groups, but you come to my church, none of my people are going to give money to that person because they know those two organizations. They know what they believe. They'll go investigate them. They'll go look them up. You can Google everything. Okay? So there isn't, I mean, they're in the benefit there. But if you, if you can say, hey, look, I'm going through GMA, Grace Missions Agency. <laughs> That's just what I call it right now. And you can agree with the doctrinal statement. You can agree what's being preached and so forth. Then what are you going to do? You're going to send your money knowing that 95 to 100% is going that direction. Follow that? It's more we're trying to administratively help. She's going to Thailand. They sent me a packet like that that has to be filled out by the sending agency. The biggest of that packet was the issue of insurance and emergency insurance and health insurance. And if there's a political coup while she's in Thailand, how do we get her out? That's on us. That's on the insurance. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, I'm reading through this, I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, what can of worms did I just open? Well, I call our insurance company, and they go, oh, yeah, no problem, we take care of that. 525 bucks, we got it covered for the year. I'm like, are you sure? He goes, do we do it all the time for the other groups? We know what's going on. I'm like, mm, okay. Well, 525 is not bad to get all that covered and taken care of and so forth. So we're working on the, the mission thing. That's kind of coming in the pipeline. But you take the, I, I, my biggest thing when I, and by the way, when I look at the mega churches and I talk about marketing, you're in 1 Corinthians, just look at 2 Corinthians 4, just real quick. Because I want you to understand our ministry, this is our ministry verse, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2. And I don't look at those groups to gain anything to market, to get more people to come in, because how do you get... How do you grow a local assembly? Have you ever thought about that? Inside out. Paul says it. You, I, we talk, we witness, we see people get saved, we see people come to the knowledge of the truth, and what do we do? Duplicate the process. So that's an inside situation working where? Outside bringing them in. A marketing program will not grow your local assembly. I'm sorry. It won't work. Brethren that used to be a part of us have tried that, and they failed. Okay? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2, but, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's our ministry verse at home. We talk about that verse a lot. So when I'm overlooking at different things, it isn't to be dishonest or crafty or try to develop a marketing plan. They did that, and they're dealing with people. Folks, people come into your, our assemblies hurt and broken. And when they come in, you've got to know how to deal with them. And sometimes smacking them upside the head with, with a Bible verse isn't going to get the job done. That's why Paul would tell you to have your speech seasoned with grace and salt and have a little loving and meekness and kindness. But you've got to know how to do that and how to deal with that. And uh, that's, I, I, I said that in my notes. Are, I'm like, eh, I don't want you to understand. I don't want you to think I'm out here trying to dabble. I'm just trying to figure out where are the people. And my state is different. When the Supreme Court broke, uh, knocked down our uh, marriage constitutional amendment that we had for marriage, 95% of, of the state of Arizona wanted to leave the United States. They literally cut it now. We'll deal with Mexico. We'll get a support out of Rocky Point down there. Do it. I mean, they, you're talking about dead serious. How dare them over there tell us that we voted? 
when that amendment hit the ballot, 95% of the people in the state of Arizona voted for that amendment to be the Constitution. How dare you? you know, and then everybody, well, you know, the bully, you know, the majority, they didn't care. They were just that upset. And this is local guys, not Rush and not the big boys. Well, how do I work in that environment? So I look around and see how the other guys are doing it and kind of tiptoe in going, hey, you know what? <laughs> there's, a, there's a better government you should be worried about and thinking about. So we've spent the last year, two years, looking at the heavenly places and the organization, the structure, the inheritance, the reward, and all that stuff, because that's a little better than worrying about Washington, D.C. <laughs> so I would encourage you, like I said, we, we did the marriage seminar because our people needed it. They need it. And we did not put it on YouTube. I'm not going to put it on YouTube because it's a very private matter. We had a Q&A time. You want to see it, you can see this. You can get with Debbie and get from Dad. It, it, it's, it's a very private issue. The plan is for us now to begin to do this once a year um, in our assembly. We're going to do the uh, once a year probably with one gentleman looked at me and he says, I'm f I've been married 50 years, I don't need that. His wife liked to knock his head off. <laughs> and and uh, Mr. Mr. Boggs was in trouble, and and she said no. And they they weren't able to be there. They're winter visitors, and they were leaving. And he he just he just said I shouldn't have said that. He said nope, you shouldn't have said that. So he's like, well, just save me a copy. I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, he was joking. They were dead serious. But uh, th no, she wasn't. So anyway, so that's what we've been doing. Okay, um, a lot of the same things you guys are doing here or there. We have. With the motivation, really, of, of trying to help, being that helper of your joy. That's my ministry verse, uh, 2 Corinthians one twenty four. So you, you just you got to pay attention to your people. Where are they? What do, what do they need that maybe they don't need? That, by the way, on the marriage thing, I'll tell you right now, if you, if you counsel in marriage, just say no. Um, just don't do it. What I'm finding now, I'm dealing with two couples right now who are, marriages are just in turmoil on the big D doorstep. Big D is divorce, okay? And I'm finding out that they had a lousy beginning. That they don't understand what a role of a wife is or a role of a husband. What God designed it to look like. So if you are dealing with people, you got to go back to where? The fundamental, the basics. Because they're not, they don't get it. Or they didn't get it when they got started, okay? And these aren't newlyweds. These are 20 and 30 years in the marriage. Something to think about. Know your people. So that's what we've been doing. Um, I only took 30 minutes. So I don't know if you have any questions or anything. Yes, sir? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. the the goal The goal with the missions thing is to do just that. It's that it is to set up the organization, so that administratively, if you said, "Hey, I got so and so in my group. They want to go to the mission fields. Can you help?" Then we can come in and help, and either by them raising the funds, and then the funds trickle in through our five hundred one three C. And our organization, we keep all the records and everything. The, the hardest when, with the issue with Thailand with Rebecca was the administrative stuff. She, it was just, I was like, my goodness. And she's going to Grace International School in Thailand, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Grace International School is a school where the missionaries send their kids to be trained, to be uh, taught. So predominantly English-speaking people and some, uh, some folks out of the Philippines and stuff. But when you look at GSI's web uh, doctrinal statement, I don't agree with that, but I'm supporting her. She has to pay her own way the, as she's a teacher. They don't, they don't support her at all. If you're going to come do this, you're really you're coming on your own dime. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll help you on the administrative side. So, yeah, so that's coming. We're, we're, in, the, we're in the conception of the thought process. So, yes, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
yes.